Everyone you're in a communist uh, utopia. Monopoly for socialists. Lefties aren't having it. Being offended by everything just to stop. Stop, what are you doing? Monopoly Socialism. The game that lit the internet world on fire. And I got it right here. Hasbro has been on a bit of a boomer streak recently with this and Monopoly for Millennials. I mean, just judging from the cover, clearly this is not a game for socialists. Which, considering all of the competition Monopoly has, you know, board game wise, and how no young people actually play Monopoly now, making a Monopoly socialism for socialists would have probably been a good business decision. You're welcome, Hasbro, you gotta go for the youth. But before we open it up, I'd like to take one second to talk about how ridiculous it was to get this game. I was broke when it first started going viral, so I had to wait until payday to get it. But by then a bunch of news stories had been written about it, it got pulled off the shelf, and all these scalpers had taken all the copies of this $16 board game and started selling it for over $100! They didn't do anything except have the money to invest before anyone else, and now they're raking in all of the profits. If that's not a great example of capitalism, I don't know what is. Alright, it's the moment you all have been waiting for. I can't believe they revealed the roster for Monopoly Socialism. We have Typewriter, Record Player, Pocket Watch, Telephone, Telephone Junior, Television, and Lenin's Grave. What do these have to do with socialism again? So like regular socialism, you still roll the die, move around the board, collect money and chance cards, you know the drill. But it shuffles things up a bit. According to the rules, there are no properties in this game. Instead, they're replaced by community projects. You have Open Minds Library, Healthcare for All Hospital, Together We Rise Bakery, which is super dope. If you two fails, you already know what I'm gonna be doing. And so on. Yeah, they all emanate like off the charts boomer levels, but hey, they're kind of fun. I can't get mad at that. The pass go is now collect a living wage. <laughs> I love it. The chance cards on the other hand, yeesh. Minimum wage increase. Sucks to be a small business owner, pay the bank. Your neighbor's son gets into college. Our community covers tuition. Thanks, socialism. <laughs> Dude, this is literally Fox News the board game. <laughs> what the fuck? This game is filled with things like this. But, but hey, maybe actually playing it is fun. I don't know. So I dragged my girlfriend into this, and now we're gonna play the game together. So we'll see if it's any good. All right, so I'm gonna be Lennon's grave, and who are you gonna be? What is there? There's music play. Uh, oh, a microwave. What? No, it's a TV. Oh, it's a TV, it's a TV. I'll get the TV. All right. Let's go. So we don't really have any money left, so I guess I guess that's it. This is fucking over. It's been like a little bit over an hour and I thought Monopoly was supposed to take forever. What the fuck? This game fucking sucks. This game sucks, Hasbro. Apparently this is how it is by design because your community fund only has $1,848 because that's when the communist manifesto was released. Uh -huh. <laughs> but now the fucking game sucks, Hasbro. I spent $100 on this. It's even worse than regular Monopoly, and that's a huge accomplishment. <sighs> if you're a conservative and you made it all the way through the video, hear me out. This isn't socialism. It's a mockery. It's made in bad faith, and it combines 20th century stereotypes against unions and the Soviet Union with modern stereotypes against the left. It's not real. It's what the opposition thinks socialism is. Even the right's take on this game is in bad faith. 
New Monopoly game triggers liberals. Bro, you made the same video that five other people did, and not one leftist YouTuber has done the same. Yeah, until now. But I mean, yeah, who's the one that's getting triggered, bro? Come on. Anyway, it's obvious that they designed the game to end like this, with the community fund going bankrupt. <sighs> the community fund and cooperation is designed to fail because taxes do not go to the community fund, they go to the private bank. How is that even remotely socialism? That's not even a legit parody. You can't call it socialism if there's an outside capitalist force who constantly sabotages your efforts to build socialism. Oh, wait, maybe that's kind of accurate. At this point, I'm sure we all know the story of the landlord's game. The board game was designed by Elizabeth Maggie in 1903. She was a Georgist, which to summarize it in one sentence and piss off all the actual Georgists, it's a political philosophy that holds that no individual should profit off the land. It belongs to all of us. The game was meant to be an educational game to teach people why ownership of land leads to the landowners getting richer and the renters getting poorer. The inevitable reality of this system is massive inequality and poverty on one side, and on the other, a total monopoly. Then came Charles Darrow, who saw the game was popular among left-wing intellectuals and wanted a piece of the pie. Except, he was a diehard capitalist, and he did what all diehard capitalists do, steal. And so he made his own version, Monopoly, a celebration of American values. He actually got rejected <laughs> the first time he tried to get it to Parker Brothers, a Hasbro subsidiary, to buy his game because it was quote unquote, too complicated, too technical, and it took too long to play. <laughs> yeah, they had the right idea. Eventually though, Parker Bros smelled the cash and thought, hey, we want some of that, and bought the rights to Darrow's Monopoly. Except, uh-oh, in 1935, they learned he wasn't the original creator. So like all good business people, they told him to double down on the lie bought the rights to Maggie's version and all other variations, and tried to force their way into legitimacy. Maggie held a few interviews defending her position as the OG creator, but it was too late. The company began crafting a myth about Darrow and the origins of the game. By 1970, the real history was forgotten. Instead, most people believed that the original creator of Monopoly was a modest Pennsylvanian gentleman who created a masterpiece, sold the rights, and lived peacefully off the royalties. But it's not real. It's a lie. Just like Monopoly Socialism, it's a mythology we get told to justify the status quo. And here's the kicker. They had to invent a private bank and artificially limit the starting money to make sure Monopoly Socialism ends in failure for all. But regular Monopoly also ends with everyone losing except for one person. And they didn't have to invent anything. It's a fairly accurate representation of how land ownership tends to go. In the United States, most land is owned by a small number of individuals and small families. That's how it's supposed to work. So viewer, do you want an accurate Monopoly Socialism rule set? Here you go. Find other Monopoly sets and take all their money and put it into the community fund and also get rid of the private bank. Y you think I'm joking, but I'm not. The 1848 limit is an arbitrary one and meant to end in failure. The US is the richest country in the history of the planet. And if we started the game with a community fund that reflected that, all the projects would get built and everybody would win. So please stop believing the billionaires who tell you cooperation is a bad thing because cooperation between the working people is probably the only thing they're afraid of. But before you go, guess who lives in the most unequal time in the US since the Great Depression and has to pay rent? This guy! I'm revving up the engines on my channel and I'm releasing three videos every month from now on. And to support this, I'm officially announcing my Patreon. For its release month, if you sign up for $5 or more, you get a cool Comrade K9 sticker, Design TBD. Want to be a Puppy Prince or a K9 Commander? or the elusive Hound King. All the subs are extremely worth it, so please go, 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 check it out. This video was brought to you by John Croissant and Ben Harvey. Y'all are the shit. Especially Ben, he's a recurring donor. Man, you get in my Patreon for free, bro. I'll send you money. Thank you so much, y'all. Peace.